So the vision of the future, but I'm also going to report what is the vision of the colleagues who just spoke, as our chair was saying, in, uh, among corporations, unions, and governments' perspectives, those who spoke in the, in the panel before. Now, as a, a good reporter, I'll try to tell you a story with a headline, with uh, what has been said, so facts, eh? uh, reporting facts, and I'll also try to give you my conclusions. <coughs> the headlines first. The headlines is that the future is unwritten. We know that. And as our friend, a fellow from the World Academy, said, the future has no history. This is his book, and I invite you to read it. But apart from these quotes, we can say that if radical change does not, does not happen, I mean, there will be no happy ending in our story. So we need a radical change. We need a radical change, and we know that economic growth in it's not enough. It's not enough for education. It's not enough for the well-being of humanity. We know that we are facing a situation where society is in a crisis. There is a crisis of norms. There is common threat, a threat in terms of violence, in terms of societal instability. There is an issue of environmental degradation. Uh, and there is an issue of conflicts, all sorts of conflicts. Old conflicts do not die, and new conflicts come up constantly. There has been a tremendous spike in the last 20 years of new conflicts. So this for me is the title. The world of work is also into an accelerated change. We know there are multiple drivers for this change, and technology is one we heard about in the panel, and I'm going to report that to you. Demography, climate change, globalization, these are the main drivers of our change. But this in the, is work, but work and education go hand in hand. These are intersections, actually. The world of work, the world of education come together, inevitably. So one has to mirror the other. There are issues of inequality, there are issues of unemployment, of underemployment, of forced and child labor, of informality, of exploitation of women and children. So the quality of education, the quality of work, is what matters to us. And this, in my views, is the future, what we have to, to deal with. And I'll come to that later. Now the report, this uncensored report of what our colleagues uh, said. I want to repeat the names. Uh, Luigi Perisic, Silvio Franchi, Laura Baldassare, Renzo Cianfanelli and Noemi Ranieri uh, under the uh, chairmanship of George Halverson. Now, I found that all of their comments were obviously punctual, but Noemi told us, first of all, that education and, and you know, it's not just rights, it's also obligations. And we have to keep that into mind. That there is a transformation, we heard about the transformation, but that the challenge is in the speed of the transformation. In her views, we have to have a, a person-centered approach, and, uh, and we have to act with flexibility. Uh, the, the projects that we have to put in place, they have to take into account a cultural perspective and curricula that are being taught, they have to be context-specific oriented to employment, oriented to employment, and employment opportunities. Luigi, Luigi spoke about digitalization of industry, of restructuring companies, of reviewing the organizational setup of those companies. The future is made of outcomes, of solutions, of relationships, and, and in order to remain in business, we have to take all this into account. So there are opportunities as well, but we have to bring back the industries into this technological mode. We have to bring them up to speed. And this includes also small and medium enterprises. Actually, they are the backbone of our own economies. So the business model has to be smart and smart in manufacturing, but we also have to reduce the digital divide across the board. So education and training have also, in his mind, 
an issue of speed. Speed is, is the uh, ultimate factor in terms of success. Silvio of CJIL said that what are the, <coughs> what is needed, sorry, is, uh, 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 is social mobility, that investments are required, investments within the manufacturing um, business. Uh, and technological innovation, so I agreed with, with Luigi, technological innovation is absolutely needed. But this is the duty also of the enterprises and of governments, it's their responsibility. So research is important, investments in research is important. He brought the example of Korea, he said it's an extremely successful country, and in a very short time, in a very short span, managed to modernize and to reflect the innovation, the innovation technological innovation into beauty itself, into art. And this is also something that we have to appreciate and keep into mind. Laura. Laura said that it's also an issue of human development. And we have to increase opportunity for local development. So she put the accent on local development. And also on the rights of infancy, the rights of infants, on the values that we have to transmit. It is a transboundary approach. We are all citizens of the world, and we all deserve learning opportunities. The most important thing for Laura is to invest in the first three years of the life of a child. We have to involve children from the very beginning, when they're born, into their exercising their own uh, skills and opportunities, their own talents. Um, she also brought the examples of Rome, of what Rome is doing in, in many good ways. Renzo, Renzo spoke about the new media perspective, and he said that media, media uh, distort the, 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 the news very often. Uh, news should be checked. Uh, news uh, actually do not respect privacy, and, and, uh, and the freedom is also compromised. So he sounded very critical of what news are providing nowadays. I mean, the social media actually have distorted the, the system. They should go back into being really reporters of facts, informing and, and, and really separating what is true from what is not true. This phenomenon of fake news, uh, news is contaminating our culture. So I think I have reported more or less what my colleague said. Let's say what I can conclude out of that. We have a transformation in, in process. There are risks, huh? there is risk of exclusion, there are risks of inequality, of gender disparity, of privileges, and there are opportunities. These are the opportunities of the quality of education and of transforming this education in employment, in startups for youth, for environmental concerns, for the societal change that we all need. That is, that is part also of this demographic and climate change that we are confronted with. So the landscape is transforming, the social volatility is in front of us, the political and security dimension is changing, but we have to do the utmost to minimize risk and to anticipate change. I'm sure that you agree with me. So the technological transfers are needed, but we also are embarking into a lifelong learning journey and we have to look into the sustainability of our interventions, of the educational system. The, the final point is, what can we do to make this work? Probably is to accelerate the global transition towards social and economic sustainability. We have to give more opportunities for quality work and we have to make sure that this will produce the 600 million jobs that we can create from now until 2030, if we invest with new technologies in agriculture, in forestry, in energy, in constructions, in transports. And we have to care also for the seven, 780 million working poor that we have at present. So the way we can do our future better and then we can have a vision for a better future is really to take this into account, accelerate this transformation and make it just for everybody.